Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here with another episode of FTL. Welcome aboard, and let's jump right in. So, new game. Now, we're not going to be using the Kestrel still. Today we, are being... Today, we are going to be using the Slug Cruiser. Now, normally, I like to have played through it a couple times and have unlocked the Type B, which I will then show you. However, this time, I wanted to try it, because we just unlocked it for the first time with here. So, we're going to be using the Type A. We're going to rename it to start off. It's not going to be the Man of War. It's going to be the VSS Blindside. Taking everyone by surprise. So, we're going to have... Uh, Let's have uh, Corsair and Brigand look uh, pirate-style names for our sneak attack ship. GM Foe? I don't know what that's all about. Delete those, thank you very much, and we'll call you Brigand, I believe. Unless I have two people in Brigand now. There we go. Now, before we get started, we'll quickly talk about our ship. So, this ship has some interesting qualities. First of all, it has no radar, because it counts on the slug's innate ability to use their telepathy to reveal rooms and lifeforms when sensors are down. In addition, I think to make up for the fact that you have no radar, you start out with level 2 doors. Fairly interesting, gives us the ability to deal with fires a little bit more efficiently. Also, it should be noted that the airlocks are only in these backwards locations, meaning it's going to be quite difficult to air up to this area if we need to have put out fires. Another thing worth noting is that they have a very interesting augmentation, specifically slug repair gel, which automatically repairs any hull breaches could be very useful, given that we only have two crew, which is going to create another problem. We cannot man the helm, weapons, and shields simultaneously, so we'll have to work around that or hopefully quickly find a third crew member. Another thing worth noting is that we have an anti-bio beam, a breach bomb, and dual lasers to start off for weapons. We have a very great variety of weapons, but it should be noted, very little damage potential. The anti-bio beam is great for blasting out crew members, although for some reason it doesn't seem to do much if you fire it through shields, or so I've found in previous gameplays. The breach bombs are great for putting holes in ships, but not very good for actually damaging the systems, or damaging the hull. Doesn't do any hull damage at all. And the dual lasers. Very weak, but not too bad at the very start of the game. Hopefully we'll be able to upgrade some of this stuff to give us a little bit more damage potential. It should also be noted that we have three weapons here, giving us a total of four required power, but our weapon system only starts with three energy bars. So we're going to have to upgrade that before we can use all three of these simultaneously. One final thing to keep in mind while we're doing this adventure is these three achievements. I'm going to list them in the order of this way I think they'll be the easiest to do. Specifically, the Disintegration Ray, meaning that we can kill three enemy crew members with one shot from our anti-bio beam. I think that'll be pretty easy, probably involves just getting them all in the med bay, which I'll have breach bombs so they can't use it and then frying them all instantly. Home sweet home for jumping to 30 nebula locations before Sector 8, which should be fairly easy if you make a point of actually going to those nebula locations, which I normally don't, but with this ship probably will. And we're in position, which involves using the slug cruiser and having vision of every enemy ship's room without functioning sensors. This one's tricky because of the fact that it just involves a bunch of different things. There are a bunch of different ways we can see enemy ship rooms, for example, having bombs in them, having crew teleported into them, or having uh, drones that have blasted on board. I'm not sure if just being able to see where the people are in those rooms counts for that achievement, but we'll have to work at, work at it and figure it out. I have a feeling that using things such as bombs and teleported on board crew is going to do the most because these crew reveal nearby rooms when they're in them. We'll have to wait and see, though. However, that's enough talking to get started. We're going to be playing on normal, and we're going to jump straight into this game. So, here we go. And here we are. The data we carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet, obviously, so we'll need to gather some supplies in each area. But make sure we get to the exit before those rebels can catch us up. They're telling us about bombs, of course, but... Boop. We already know all about bombs. We can fire them directly on enemy ships, disregarding their shields and their drones. Okay, now, I'll power up our bio beam and our breach bombs and hopefully be ready to do some damage when we find some enemies. We only have two crews, so we cannot power those systems like we would normally, and we will just have to make do with that for now. So let's jump and hopefully find something good. We've got a little nebula there to visit. We might work towards our 30 nebulas in the game. Hopefully that'll be okay. Let's see here. Black market trying to buy our missiles. I would love to get that scrap, but I cannot afford to sell those missiles because we're probably going to need them. So we're going to jump ahead and find something else to do. Let's come over here. Hello there, unmarked location. As soon as we arrive, a small mantis ship detaches from a wreck and jumps away. We are interrupted their salvage operation because we find a weapon ready to be installed, giving us 8 scrap and a heavy laser, Mark 1. 
This is a very terrible weapon, really, but it's a little bit better than our dual lasers. <laughs> it does two damage each instead of one damage each. It gives us the chance for fire and breaching. So I suppose we can swap those out. As far as I can tell, they are basically interchangeable. This takes 9 seconds to charge, that takes 10 seconds to charge. This actually charges faster. Ah! No, this only fires one shot. So we're not going to want to do that. We are going to want to keep our dual lasers on. I thought it was strange that I thought it fi also fired two. But we have something to sell now, and that's never a problem. So, jumping onwards. We could sell the store right now for that extra scrap at the very beginning. However, I think I'm actually going to hold on to it, because once we have their shields disactivated, deactivated, it might be nice to be able to use heavy lasers instead of breach bombs. So let's hop into the nebula and see what else we can do. That's an interesting weapon variety on our hand already. An advanced rebel automated ship for main station near a small rebel space station. However, without functioning sensors, it's impossible to tell what's inside. I have slugs. Why can't I telepathically see what's inside? Ah well, we'll attack the automated ship to get to that station, because we want to know what's in there. Also, since it's automated, we'll be able to use all three of these weapons, actually, because we'll be turning off our anti-bio beam. That's actually kind of useful. Let's attack that automated ship. They have an attack drone. That's not good for us. You are actually going to get out of the weapon station, into the shields, otherwise that defense drone by itself will pummel us. Ah, it's a laser drone. That's even worse. <laughs> okay. Let's breach out their weapons as quickly as possible. We're going to dual laser the shields, and once that's done, we'll heavy laser something else. Do as much damage as possible, folks. Weapons, the rocket is offline, but that one's probably going to hit us right in the engine. Yes, it did. Big hit in the engine. We have 0% evade now. Fantastic. And we're going to quickly try and heavy laser through that shield before it recharges, and we failed. Great. Okay. Engines are still completely offline. We're going to send our slug over here to fix that, and while that's happening, we're going to send another slug over here to power the weapons. Our oxygen is also offline now. Not good. We need to break those weapons the rest of the way, otherwise we're going to take a whole pile of damage. Hopefully we'll be able to hit, hopefully we'll be able to hit those shields. There we go, shields are now offline for them. We've taken more damage. We're not going to try and avoid using our breach bombs again in this fight, because we've already used two. We shouldn't need any more at this phase, because now, ugh, if I can hit them, we should be able to pummel them with our dual lasers and heavy laser. So let's see if we can do what I'm trying to do. You get in there, fix that oxygen. I should have had you doing that for a while now. Heavy lasers, hit the helm. Thank you, you can no longer dodge us, and the next shot should take you down. Dual lasers to the drone control for the victory. There we go. We are down to 58% oxygen, but we're still doing okay. We salvage 17 scrap from the broken ship and investigate the station to find... a system repair drone and 7 scrap within. The station was apparently designed to outfit rebel ships with drone systems, and we have stolen this one. Very nice. So Corsair, back in the command there. You get back in your weapon systems. We're going to turn off the heavy lasers and the dual lasers to reactivate the bio beam for the next fight. We are going to upgrade our systems, hopefully. Can we upgrade? No. Hmm. Once we get the energy, I guess we could do this now. But then I'm going to be hard-pressed for energy in a moment. We'll try it. We're going to upgrade our weapon control. We're going to take the energy out of the med bay, like the fools we are. And activate our dual lasers simultaneously, so we now have three of our weapons online. Very nice. Hopefully this doesn't turn out to kick me in the butt. Now, we can go... I guess we want to try and come around this way. I'm not sure if we'll be able to make those jumps. We'll at least do one, two, three, four, five jumps. We'll have to see how far we get, because I don't want to waste any time in these earlier sectors. Hello there. The beacon has been built for nearby civilian space station. No one hails our ship. Well, that's a waste of time. And another store there. That's unfortunate, too. Let's come to this station and see what they have to say. Hello there. Rebel ship hails. We did not fight a war to let a single Federation ship shatter our dreams of a better galaxy! He logs weapons. They're going to be teleporting on board, aren't they? Like stinkers. Okay, this is going to be painful in a moment. They're in our oxygen room. Get in there and fight them. They're not letting, we're not letting them take down our oxygen. We need that to breathe. Alright, they've got a big laser and a beam weapon. We're going to need to deal with those. We're also going to need to deal with our shields, so we'll hit that with our breach bomb, hopefully. If we can get them to teleport back, that would be nice. And now we can quickly dual laser their weapons. Bam, bam. That was not actually enough damage to break, and <laughs> they broke our med bay. Lovely. Okay. We're going to come out of the helm, fix the med bay, because we're going to need that to heal him up after he's being hit by all these attacks. We are going to breach bomb their shields again, because we need those shields to be down. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to hit them with a the bio beam like we'd like. Like so. 
for Zap. Very powerful. Our slug is almost dead now. We're going to swap slug, so no still attacking him. Like that. We're going to dual laser out the weapons again. Keep them offline. And I get them right back online as soon as I break them, but that's just how it goes. That crew member teleported back on board the ship, I believe. Strange. strange. I thought he was dead. But apparently no. It seems he made it out. Also, we have no power in our medbay, of course, because I'm a fool. So let us quickly... Um, I don't know if it just sounded. We'll turn that back on. We could be in a bad way here. In fact, I am going to turn off one of my weapons. I'll turn off my breach bombs to power the medbay, because we need that power right now. He is, in fact, dead. We have one person remaining on the enemy ship, who we are going to hit with the anti-bio beam, hopefully killing. Yes, we killed him. Now that their ship has been emptied of hostiles, we search it, finding a prisoner who offers to join our crew. We also find 17 scrap. Perfect. We have an NG. Even better. We now have someone who can deal with things like damaged systems with very little trouble. Very nice. <laughs> this is a very weird layout for our skills, though. Alright, you know what? We are going to send Steli, our engineer, to power our weapons system. Corsair is going to come back to the command. Brigand is going to head to shields now. Reason being, we want our engineer as close as possible to these major systems to repair them if they get damaged. Whew. Okay, we're also going to add more power to our system, allowing us to activate our breach bombs again. Hopefully this will be working out nicely. Awesome, that was just what we needed. A third crew member allowing us to power more systems. Now, we can in fact jump this far. That's great. Let's head over here and then work our way back. Hello there. What do we have over here? Another unmanned ship patrols this area. We prepare our ship for combat. Yes, we do. The ship starts to power up its FTL drive, and if it gets away, we'll no doubt warn the fleet of our position, and it has a stealth system, so it's going to be hard to hit. We're going to power up our non-human killing weapons, activate our engines to level 2, since we do not need our bio beam at this time, and hopefully fry this guy before he can get away. So, that's what it's all about. It's the name of the game here. Doing damage. Hopefully this works out. There we go. Weapons are offline. Their helm is offline. We're probably not going to need any of those breach missiles because the next hit we do, we should kill them. Get that stealth system. There we go. And down they go. Very nice. The ship breaks apart and we feel relief in the knowledge that we will hopefully still be one step ahead. We get two missiles, one drone part, and nine scrap. Very nice. Is anything in here on fire? <laughs> one of the problems with not being able to see is that if these rooms are on fire, we have no way of knowing. Now, we cannot still afford that, so we're going to deactivate our engines, deactivate our heavy laser, and put our bio beam back on charge. Jumping ahead, we can jump to this distress beacon, which could be interesting, so I, says, I say we do it. Hello there, distress beacon. What say you? Alright, we follow the distress beacon to a small asteroid belt. They find a small ship struggling to maneuver through the field. They message us, Help! Our shields are down, and we don't know how much longer we can last! We can try and shield them and escort them out, or we can not risk them and leave them to their fate. Well, might as well try and help them, although we'll probably wind up getting hurt in the process. Let's see. Oh, yes, we prevented them from being entirely destroyed, but they t we took a number of hits in the process. They offer some scrap and fuel as thanks. We have three fuel and 21 scrap. Not bad. That allows us to buy the upgrade we wanted to power our engines. And we'll be able to keep going from here. Alright, so let's move on, I guess. Nothing else to do while we're here, so let's jump ahead. Now, we should probably head back towards the exit. It's tempting to come up here to this distress beacon and work our way back. But I kind of like to make it safely through those four jumps, so that's what we're going to do. Hello there, store. We find ourselves surrounded by a group of mysterious alien vessels. They hail us and apparently have some valuable technology for sale. Strange that even though we know all of the aliens that exist, we don't know what those aliens are. They're offering a burst laser too, which is quite nice. And heavy ion. Hmm... Heavy Ion might actually be a nice addition to our ship, but we don't really have anything we can sell to get it. Slug Repair Gel is worth eh, 30 to sell. It's not really worth the sale here. Hmm. Yeah, nothing we can really afford to sell to get those items, so we'll have to pass for them for now. But we'll refuel and repair in the opposite order. But you know what I mean. We could buy sensors for 40 as well, but for now we're going to try and avoid doing that to get the advantages and hopefully get that achievement for seeing all the rooms without radar. Hello, jump. Now we're going to head down here. What say you to that? Ha <laughs> ha! Our jump leads to nothing but empty space. This jump beacon serves as no purpose other than as a connection, unfortunately, so we're going to jump on ahead again. And a sun! That's bad. We arrive at the beacon to find ourselves dangerously close to a star. An automated rebel ship, impervious to the heat, moves in to engage. 
Now this is a place where honestly having uh, those extra energy bars isn't super helpful because we can't always use them, but I'm still hesitant, I guess we should breach the shields, still hesitant to put that energy elsewhere. Here comes a missile, and it hits our engines, of course it does. However, their shields are now damaged, so we can hit them again, and now hit their weapons for a big hit. There we go, their weapons are broken, and quite badly that broken at that. Get in there, repair that, quickly dual laser here, heavy laser there, take them down, and we missed. There we go, now they're dead, there's nothing they can do about it. Having that engineer on board is fantastic, makes doing this a lot easier. We're going to be set on fire in a second, and I don't even know if any rooms are on fire at the moment. Hit them with those dual lasers, kill them off. We are now definitely on fire. Our helm is broken, which is not good for getting out of here quickly. Are any of our rooms on fire? Just the helm from the looks of it. The ship explodes, even behind a substantial collection of useful scrap, including three fuel, a drill part, and 13 scrap metal. Very nice. Now send this slug over here to get a good view of the other rooms on board ship. See what else may be on fire. It looks like we're doing mostly okay. We're going to need to get out of here quickly, though. There's another solar flare incoming. You get down two weapons. You get back over here to shields. No, not, not all of you. Corsair, back on the helm. We can't get out of here without you. Now that room's on fire, unfortunately. However, hopefully our engineer can put it out fairly quickly. There we go. Let's jump, before we get hit again, to the exit of the area. Taking quite a bit of a beating here. We've arrived at the Long Range Beacon, and they offer us a sale for two missiles, two fuel, in exchange for four missiles. Very nice offer, trader. I guess I will take that. Thank you very much. Now we're going to send our NG back to their station. I think all our fires are out safely. I think. <laughs> okay. And we'll reactivate our weapons for normal fighting. Should be good. And we'll jump on to the next sector. Here we go. We have two options here. Rebel control... Ah, oh, there's only one navy left. We're going to be really hard-pressed to make our uh, our quota for jumping into 30 nebulas. That's okay. We'll have to do that another time. We've got a rock-controlled sector and an engine-controlled sector. Let's jump to the engine-controlled sector and see what they have to offer. I'm going to stick to the friendly route for the early part of the game. We've arrived in NG space. Mantis have been threatening the NG core worlds, but as always, we can stock up for our journey here. Hello there, people. We got an empty map, no nebulas here. <laughs> Not ideal for our slugs, but that's okay, slugs. You can still make our way anyway. What have we here? Haha! I knew someone would fall into our dastardly trap! It appears this distress beacon was nothing but a decoy for a pirate ambush. Well, we can't be having that now, can we? We're going to charge up weapons and make them regret doing that. Should I activate the heavy laser too, do you think? Hmm. I suppose so. No, actually, we'll turn off the breach bomb, because that's a waste of this phase. And we'll just blast through their shields and things for now, and then once the overshield is down, then we can really focus on making them regret attacking us. It should be worth noting that I'm not actually sure if we can do any... That might hurt when it hits us. Ooh, that was close. I'm not actually sure if our bio beam does any damage to that shield, so I'm not going to worry about hitting it for now. Hit them with a heavy laser, that should break the shield. Now we can dual laser their shields, and quickly bio beam right through there. Hello guys, I'm here to hurt ya. Alright, now we'll turn off the heavy laser, turn on the breach bombs, so that we can actually hit their systems. And that would be good. Alright, there's their potential for actually doing damage gone. They're starting to die. Oh, hang on, they got their shields back online, despite the fact that I just hit them. So we're going to dual laser that, and as soon as that first laser hits, we're going to fry them with our anti-bio beam, hopefully killing them completely. There's one person left alive on board the ship, but that shouldn't last for long. Especially because there's a big hole in that ship, as far as I can tell. And this should kill them. And it does! We find a weapon system on their ship. With no crew to stop us, we install it on our own. 24 scrap and a hull smasher laser. This could actually be an incredibly po uh, profitable ship to fly around in. The hull laser level 1 takes 2 power, fires 2 shots that do 2 damage to systemless rooms. Would be nice to have on there, but for now we'll stick with this setup. We're getting lots of good weapons here. Alright, I think next step is definitely upgrading shields to level 2, because that will make us, uh, blah, make us a lot more survivable. We're going to go a little bit further on here, and then we're going to be heading off for another episode. So let's jump over here and see what we can find. Hello there, galaxy. We over here Mantis Calm Chatter. Agreed. Next ship is your turn. Good hunting. They don't see us yet. 
Well, we're not gonna let, try and remain concealed. We're going to punch them in the face. So let's do battle. They have one person on board trying to come onto our ship like the fool that they are. So we're gonna get over there and punch them in the teeth until they stop. Get over there and fight them, slug. Unfortunately, we're gonna need to move another slug in there to stop him from getting overwhelmed by the all-powerful mantis. Now, they have very little attack potential at the moment, and we missed our breach bomb, unfortunately. So we're going to now hit their shields. Good, very good hit on the shields, and now we're going to bio beam out there. Uh, remaining crew member. Bzzzt. Very nice. Our captain is just about dead, so he's going to run into the healing room. Their guy runs away, like I expected. Brigand, get back on shields. We're actually going to head straight back into the command console without regard for that kind of stuff. We're going to breach bomb out their shields again, dual laser their weapons, and that should make them regret ever coming on my ship. <laughs> and biobeam them for the kill. Actually, I'm going to head back into the med bay right now because they don't have any weapons that can hurt us, and they're dead anyway. There are no more life signs remaining on the ship. We strip it of useful materials, getting two missiles, a drone part, and 30 scrap. This is We're making so much money for this early stage in the game. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Not complaining, but definitely ridiculous. 30 scrap for a second area enemy. Very nice. These guys are definitely a profitable race. Alright. I guess murder does really make money. What do we want? We want shields. Didn't we want them? 10 seconds ago. Alright, we have them. We still do not have enough energy to power them. But that's okay for now. We're going to do one more jump for this episode, and we'll probably leave it for then. Let's see, what's at this unvisited location? Hello there. Space, what do you have for me? We receive a distress call from a nearby engineer ship. Assistance requested. Danger present. Imminent destruction. We respond to the call and assist them, or do we keep our distance? <laughs> of course we respond and assist. We receive another message from the ship moments later, this time with a mantis at the comm log. Foolish meat sacks! He yells. Sensors indicate the ship is moving into attack when boarders teleport from the station. Only one border, thankfully, so that's not too bad. They do have a defense drone, but that's not gonna matter because we have breach missiles, not uh, breach bombs, not missiles. Hmm, I have an ion and a hull laser, or beam weapon. That would be unfortunate to let them hit, so we are going to have to punch them in the face to stop them from doing so. Breach bomb into their shield, into their weapons, rather. And then we'll do a laser out the shields, and when that happens, we should be able, hopefully, to kill them. Now, he's going to slowly work his way into the doors, so we're going to take our shield guy off of his position, because that ion is going to turn it off anyway. And f okay. We might as well to see, okay. Unfortunately, we didn't damage the shields enough to turn them off completely. We're going to turn off our breach laser. We're going to get hit by that in just a second, which is going to hurt quite a bit. Turn on our heavy laser, and they hit our shields. But thankfully, since the shields are damaged already, that really doesn't make much of a difference. So now we need to dual laser their shields. There we go, and anti-bio beam right across there. Good, good, good. That'll hurt them. Slug, you're getting in the med bay right now. And healing up. Engine Eat, you're gonna get in there and take keep them busy. We're going to heavy laser out their mm, shields. Fuel. Keep them on the run. We're going to Oh! We killed one person. Dual laser that now. Does that kill the second person? No, he's still alive. So we're gonna bio beam him for the kill, and that will give us another ship freely loaded. They actually can't teleport back out because of the fact that. They have no teleporter on board their ship. That border is stuck here. And I'm okay with that. Our anti-bio beam should have killed him. We just have to kill this guy, and the battle is won. And there he goes. Very nice. With the crew dead, we're able to take the fuel out of storage, and we also take all the scrap we could manage. Four fuel, 30 scrap. Once again, very sizable reward here. Very sizable. Stella, you get over there and fix that. Alright. I have to say, the engineer's advanced... Uh, Repair skill is really good. Being able to fix things so much faster is just vital when you have things like hull breaches, dumping your oxygen in the oxygen room, which is also broken. <laughs> Being able to fix those things quickly is so important. Alright, well that gives us the fuel we need to power up our shields without cost of anything else. Very nice. Doing very good here so far. But we're going to have to wait now for another episode before we can wreak more havoc with the BSS blindside. Thanks for watching. This has been Vanguard of Valor. If you liked the episode, don't forget to like the episode. And I will see you again next time.